Our producer, board operator, Shane Reardon. Our coordinating producer, as always, Teresa Ann Seeger. I'm Steve Cashel. This is Sports Medicine Weekly, Chicago's premier sports medicine program, coming your way each and every Saturday from 8 to 9 a.m., only on 670. The score to access prior shows, interviews, and valuable resources on sports, injury, and fitness. Please visit our new blog at smwhome.net or the website sportsmedicineweekly.com. My usual co-host is Dr. Brian Cole, the head team physician for the Chicago Bulls. This week sitting in, so fortunate to have him, Dr. Nick Verma, head team physician for the Chicago White Sox and sports medicine specialist, orthopedic surgeon, Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Uh, Doc, our next guest is uh, Dr. Craig Delavalli from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush, one of your partners at MOR. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, aging athletes and their joints. Are we getting joint replacements at younger ages? And does our more active lifestyle contribute? This takes us back to um, a conversation you and I, you and I had off the air not long ago. One of the only athletes, uh, really pro athletes that we can think of, who had a hip replacement and came back to play Bo Jackson, right? Yeah, and I think you know that's a tribute to just how great an athlete Bo was, that he could go through a procedure like that and still compete at a professional level. Bo had an injury uh, playing football where he dislocated his hip, and as a result, his hip lost the blood supply, and um, the the ball portion of his hip, for lack of a better word, died and collapsed, and so he no longer had a joint there. And once you get to uh, an end stage of that condition, the only way to really deal with it is a replacement. So Bo had a replacement, and after really extensive rehab, he came back and played, I think, another two or three years. The downside to that that people don't talk about is the fact that he then wore out the new hip, meaning hips are metal and plastic. They're no different than a ball bearing. So similar to you know a race car, for example, where they go through ball bearings pretty much on a weekly basis versus your car where a ball bearing is going to last you 10 years, you know, uh, Bo was was racing on his hip and essentially wore it out in a very short period of time. And I think Craig can help us to understand some of the newer technological advances that are out there to help people get back to a higher level of sports after contemporary joint replacement. Yeah, Dr. Craig, how you doing this morning? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? Good, good, good. Does that bring up uh, any memories remembering uh, how Bo Jackson uh, tore through the hip? Yeah, you know, I, you know, to, to Nick's point, I, well, I guess, you know, the first thing we always recommend to folks is that um, as you age, if you are going to have your joint replacement, in general, the optimal thing to do is to modify. Um, you know, the implants that we use, I think the big changes in technology really came at about 2000. Uh, there was a big switch over from hip implants specifically that were cemented into place with like a glue to more of a biologic fixation where the patient's bone actually goes into the implant. That was a big move forward in terms of durability and the ability to uh, use it more vigorously. And also there's a big change in the bearing surface uh, where we used to use a plastic called polyethylene. There was some research done that showed that if you irradiated it, it actually um, made the durability quite a bit better. So those two things I think really for the average patient have increased the durability of the replacement. I would say in general, as was the case with Bo Jackson, we don't love the idea of running and jumping on a hip replacement. But that being said, there is a variant of hip replacement called hip resurfacing, uh, where things are a little bit different, where uh, patients actually can run and jump and do pretty much whatever they want on that specific construct. So, Craig, we're gonna, I think we're going to have you get into hip resurfacing here in a little bit. But, you know, I see a lot of younger active patients that have had, um, for example, ACL injuries or meniscal injuries that as they get to middle age, and, and, you know, this can be young patients, 40, 45, really develop fairly severe arthritis, particularly in the knee is where we see it um, as sports medicine surgeons. And the first question they always want to ask me is if I'm referring them to somebody like you for a joint replacement is, well, Doc, what can I do afterwards? Does this mean that basically I can't be active anymore? Can you give us some general guidelines of what you give your post-op patients about green light sports and kind of uh, yellow light sports and red light sports for participation after a knee replacement? Sure. So knees are a little bit different, uh, but in general, uh, the big the big things that we tell patients to avoid are running and jumping. So, uh, so those would be the red light things. So like I'm going to go run 10 miles in general on a knee replacement. That's something that we wouldn't recommend. Um, I guess the yellow light thing would be, hey, I love playing softball. I want to run to first base. I think that's fine. 
So I think what most of my patients do is they wind up modifying. So if they're junkies for the adrenaline of running 10 miles, they pick up road biking. And you can road bike for 40 miles and maybe get the same adrenaline rush or um, switch to rowing or some other non-impact loading activity. And in general, that's much, much more tolerated by the replacement than something where there's actually in, impact loading. Visiting with Dr. Craig Delavalli from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush, a joint replacement surgeon with MOR. I'm Steve Cashel with Dr. Nick Verma sitting in this week for Dr. Brian Cole. Dr. Verma is the head team physician for the Chicago White Sox. Uh, Dr. Uh, Delavalli, why are hip replacement patients getting younger? Is that true? Uh, I would say both hip and knee replacement patients are getting younger, and I think it's a, a variety of things. I think the biggest thing probably is more and more patients know someone who's had their joint replacement and had a great outcome and understand that it's not, quote, unquote, just for old people. So I think there's a much bigger cultural acceptance uh, among patients that, hey, they don't have to gut it out and they don't have to live with something that's miserable. So I think think that's one of the big things. And I think as other physicians uh, realize that as well, like Nick, who sends patients to me for joint replacements or primary care doctors, um, I think they realize that as well. And I think the third thing is, is you know, I think there was this conception that, that hip and knee replacements last for 10 years, and, and that's certainly not the case. In general, what we see is that 10 years after surgery with contemporary implants, I think it's reasonable to expect that 90% of those implants are still working well at 10 years, even in our, in our younger active patients. You know, Steve, we see patients in the office all the time who have bad arthritis, they're miserable, and they say, well, my doctor said I can't have a hip replacement or a knee replacement until I'm 55 or I'm 60, that there's some really? magic age that, yeah. at which point they're, quote, unquote, allowed to have it. And what I try to tell patients, and I'm sure Craig tells them the same thing, it's a quality of life decision, right? There's no reason for us at this day and age to tell somebody who's 52 or 53 who can't walk more than a block because they have hip or knee pain and have end-stage arthritis and have had tried all the other things that we would offer them and are suffering, those are patients that I think most of us would accept in 2018 as being candidates for joint replacement, whereas before they were probably told that they were too young. And so I think there's a much bigger emphasis now in trying to provide patients options to maintain quality of life when they have these more severe orthopedic problems. Absolutely. You know, guys, also for older patients, active may mean walking a couple of laps around the block after a knee or hip replacement. These guys were talking about for younger patients, uh, active may mean running, hiking, even participating in sport after a hip replacement. So uh, let me ask uh, Dr. Craig here, does this mean that younger patients may wear out their new hip faster? And Craig, along those lines, maybe talk to us about the hip resurfacing and why there are some advantages and who may be a candidate for that. So I would say In general, um, with the newer plastics we're using, wear has become less of an issue. That being said, I think if you held in your hand what the implants look like and saw them, you'd still look at them and say, yeah, I don't think running on this is such a good idea. So um, I think cyclical loading, you know, doing something like biking, where the joint's getting used a lot, is fine. It's just in that running, jumping, impact loading that I think can either damage the fixation surfaces, or actually break uh, the plastic liner. So I think all the data does show that younger patients are at higher risk. But as Nick had said, it's the type of thing where if you're 48 and you're miserable because you've got a bad hip, get it fixed. I mean, there's still a very reasonable chance, even at 48, that a hip replacement is going to last you a lifetime. Yeah, and Craig, I think something that you said earlier is probably one of the the more important uh, points that people need to understand is that there probably are no absolutes after joint replacement, meaning it's not that you can't run after a joint replacement. It's just that we don't want you to do it on a repetitive basis. So, you know, if you're at a company picnic and you want to play softball and you're going to run around the bases a handful of times, that's certainly very reasonable to do. But that's markedly different than somebody who wants to run five to seven miles as as their primary exercise on a five to seven day a week basis. And so I I think what's what's clear and what patients need to understand is that it's not that you can't enjoy some of the things that you've always enjoyed with a hip or knee replacement. It's just that you you, you may have to 
um, adjust your activities so that you're choosing on a routine basis non-impact activities, but you're still able to do things like a pickup game of basketball or softball or what have you if that's something that you love to do. Agreed, 100%. And finally, uh, your patient, Kurt, a very active guy, from what I'm uh, understanding, recently underwent a hip resurfacing procedure. Um, Why was he a candidate? So the big difference between hip resurfacing and a conventional hip replacement is twofold. One, the bearing surface is different. And in most hip replacements, we're either going to use some type of a plastic liner uh, with either a metal or ceramic ball. And, and, again, that works great, but um, it is prone to, to damage from impact loading. With the hip resurfacing, the bearing surface we use is a metal-on-metal bearing, which the big pro there is that you're not going to break it, you're not going to wear through it. Uh, there is a big negative, though, in that uh, it does create metal particles that are released, and those metal particles can then cause inflammation and pain around the hip. So just like Nick was saying with, activity, well, you can be more active, but you may run a little bit more of a risk. With the resurfacing, um, you can be as active as you want, but by making that choice and going with that technology, there is a unique risk associated with using that metal-on-metal bearing. I think the the bottom line is there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? And so you really need to talk to your physician to understand what are the upsides and the downsides and then choose what works best for you. I think the big thing is for, for folks to be realistic about it. You know, like I have folks who come into the office and say, yeah, I, you know, I really love to run. Okay, well, when was the last time you ran? Oh, about five or seven years ago. I think it's unlikely that that patient is going to go back to running sports. So in that patient, the risk of the hip resurfacing and the metal-on-metal bearing probably don't make sense, as opposed to someone who says, yeah, you know, I ran a marathon last year, and it killed me to do it, but I just love running so much. That patient is probably worth that risk of the metal-metal bearing because it's likely that they will return to running sports. Great stuff. Dr. Craig Delavalli, joint replacement surgeon with Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Doc, thanks so much for uh, being a part of Sports Medicine Weekly. Thanks, Craig. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. When we return here on the show, it's our staple, Ask the Doctor. Got some great questions for Dr. Nick Verma. We'll share those and tell you how you can get involved as our show continues. It's Sports Medicine Weekly, only on 670 The Score.